Hi everyone, this is Joy with Create It With Joy. Thank you for stopping by and watching my YouTube video today. Today's card is a really super cute card, totally inspired by another wonderful card maker named Mona Toff. She made these cute waffles out of this pizza stamp set from Lawn Fawn, so I had to try it. So I'm gonna be using Lawn Fawn's Reveal Wheel um, die set for this card. And so I'm going to run this through um, my die cut machine. I am using a piece of Lawn Fawn's Spiffy Speckles 6x6 paper pad to cut the front panel of the reveal wheel out of, and then just some regular white cardstock to cut the circles and the arrow out of. And I'm gonna run that through my uh, Platinum 6 die cut machine. I'm also gonna be cutting another piece out of regular white cardstock, but if you notice, I did not cut out the hole for the sentiment to go through. So now you need a little brad. You're gonna stick the two circle pieces together using that brad. Now Lawn Fawn has some little like stencils to know where to mark to stamp your images. I don't have one of those yet, so I need to get one. But the way we would do it when this first came out is you would make, you would divide this in half. I just am using a pencil lightly halfway through, then turning it around and doing it the other halfway through. So now you're gonna line it up in your window and you're gonna use your fingers and you can turn. As Soon as you get a straight up and down line in the center, you're gonna trace that little opening. Move to the next up and down line in the center, trace the opening if that makes sense. But if you can get one of these little stencils, you're much better off. <laughs> now I'm going to erase the lines, not the openings to the windows because I need to know where I'm gonna stamp my images. I'm gonna take this back apart so that way I can put my stamps on there. I'm gonna be using my Misty because that's just the easiest, it lines up. If you need to stamp the image again, you can. So now I'm gonna be using, um, this is Lawn Fawn's Reveal Wheel Friends and Family. So I'm gonna have one that says Partner in Crime, uh, One True Love, what else does it say? Shoulder to lean on and best friend. Now I have made this card. This card is gonna be for my husband. I actually am giving it to him for Father's Day. This video will be released after that just because that's just how timing has worked out. <laughs> but this doesn't have to be for Father's Day. This could be for anything, but this is the card I made for him. So I'm making sure they all those sentiments are lined up in those um, the openings that I traced with the pencil. And I'm going to be using Lawn Fawn's Deep Sea ink for this because I thought the blue ink would be gorgeous. So now I'm going to be stamping up these heart pizza images from Pizza My Heart from Lawn Fawn. But we're going to make these look like waffles. Now I stamped three because I knew the first one I wasn't going to love because I've never, I haven't colored these images. You could check out um, Mona Toth. I believe she's got a video on this on how to color. I think mine turned out great, so this works too. So I'm using um, some pencil very lightly. I'm gonna just draw a couple lines one way and then a couple lines the other way on the diagonal because you know, when you look at a waffle, that's just how it's shaped. So very lightly, I'm drawing these pencil lines. Um, something I learned from the very first heart that I colored is that you're gonna leave a lot of opening around this pencil line. And it, once it's re if it's really light, you probably won't even have to erase it if that makes sense. The colors are on the screen that I am gonna be using. I am actually starting with YR24. I liked that it had this kind of yellowy, toasty kind of color to it. Tracing the outside um, of all of the frames, the heart, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna lay down that color. And normally, you guys, lately I've been putting music to this. I probably won't this time. Um, I will probably just talk you through the coloring of this because it's quite interesting. So now, um, you can see I did that first one there. I did the second one. I liked the second one better and I will show you how I'm gonna color this in. I, it just made a lot more sense to me once I worked through the bug. Sometimes you gotta do it more than once. So I am each little triangular square piece I am coloring and then you can see that I'm leaving a good amount of white. That's where the pencil is, but I'm leaving a bigger area of white open in between each piece. This is the YR24. I'm coloring through and it looks really funny right now. You're like, how in the heck is that gonna turn into something? But it really, really does. 
And then I'm going to take, uh, I believe that is E59. And I'm going to go in just to some dark areas. Not all of it is going to be dark, just kind of at the tops and a little bit of the sides of the triangular pieces. So it's really dark. I'm laying that down just the tiniest bit, as you can see. And that will get blended out. Now I'm going to take my next color, which is probably the E37, and I'm going to go in over that E59 and blend down a little bit more, bringing out that dark color a little bit more. So this is like the really toasty, darker areas, if that makes sense. And you can see it's already starting to make that white area that we left alone um, almost stand up. So this, those shadows are pushing it back and it's bringing the white part forward. Now this is E35, I'm gonna blend out the rest of that. Now I'm gonna take my E, nope, no, this is E35, I'm sorry. Prior to that, I took E00 and went over my white lines, just traced over them. Now I'm taking that E35 and kind of going in and blending. No, that might be the, that might be the R. YR24, I'm sorry guys, you guys can see when I'm voicing over right now, my screen is really small, so I can't see what color I used. So now there is the E00, I'm going back over my white lines again. And so it softens that white, and then it also kind of bleeds out into the other color because it's so light, it's almost like a blender pen, if, in, if you will, and it kind of bleeds out that color. Now I'm just gonna kind of repeat, go back with my dark and work my way down with the lighter colors. And you really need a really dark color because you can see that it makes um, the hills and valleys really nice. Again, blending out with the next darker, which would be the E37. And you can already see how wonderful that looks. And now I'm gonna work on the outside edges, adding a little bit more dark, and then I'll work on the little frame. I don't want all of that dark blended, so I'm being very sparingly right now with that dark. But you can see what a difference that makes. Then we'll be adding a little bit of dots with the dark and with a white glaze pen. On the first one, I added too many dots and I didn't like how it looked. Um, so again, practice makes perfect. That is true what they say. I think these turned out so darling. She did them with the um, heart and the circle and I just did them with the two hearts. Mona Toth did. She makes some really beautiful cards. So finishing up, taking that E00. I only had one little pencil mark that was too dark that I had to erase. Now I'm adding a few little dots up in that darker area, and that's with that uh, E59. And then here is the white glaze pen, adding just a few here and there. Still kind of in the darker area. Super cute. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of toastiness to the outside of this heart. Nothing super crazy. Just adding little bits of color here and there and then I will blend it out um, with the YR24. I just want this to have a nice toasted waffly effect. I don't know about you guys, but I do love a good waffle. When all those little crevices are full of butter and syrup, oh my goodness. But how cute are that? Cute are those, cute are that, oh my gosh. Cute are those. Okay, let's put this together. So again, we're gonna reassemble this with the brad and the little circle in the background, in the back, and then you've got that in the front. Your reveal wheel circle in the front. We need some small pieces of foam tape to add only to the small circle that's in the back. I'm just adding like three or four pieces onto here. Um, you're gonna remove the release paper, you're going to line this up in the front window again. You've got your back piece and your front piece. Now I'm gonna line it up, make sure everything is centered. Now I'm gonna line this up with my back piece and stick it down and now, now it's adhered to your back panel. 
You're going to add foam tape all the way around to make sure it does not stop your reveal wheel from turning. I'm using my tool in one to remove um, the release paper. So again, this is the back panel and we will adhere the front panel to this. The front panel I used, I cut out again from Lawn Fawn's Spiffy Speckles paper, which was really cute. And I did it with, it was kind of like that yellowy orange color, which I thought was perfect for the toasty color from the waffles. And I also stamped some images that I forgot to say from Lawn Fawn's Sweetest Flavor, the cherries, and thanks a latte, I did the um, whipped cream. And so you'll see what we're gonna do with that. So here's the whipped cream. I cut them out using their die cut machine. I'm using the Marvy Snow Pen, the snow marker. And if you guys do not have this, you need to get this. This is the best. You dab it down, you heat it with your tool, your heat tool, and it puffs up. So it made this um, whipped cream look, look 3D. So I'm just kind of trying to keep it within the dark lines. Not that it really matters. I, I did kind of want there to be some separation, like it's billowy. Um, but if you just colored the whole thing solid, it is no big deal. So heat that up. Now that's all nice and puffy and 3D. I colored the cherries from Sweetest Flavor stamp set from Lawn Fawn with the red markers. Um, with some, yeah, a couple of the red markers. And then I'm adding some foam tape behind the waffles. And we're going to adhere this to the front. And we're going to have a guy and a girl waffle because again, this is for my cute hubby. And I wanted these guys to have some dimension. I just love that they're hearts, how dang cute. Lawn Fawn, I just love Lawn Fawn stuff. I'm sure you guys do too. They just, I mean, I love everybody's stuff, but Lawn Fawn has just the, some of the cutest things ever. So you can see that the reveal wheel spins and everything is perfect. So now we're gonna add um, some embellishments we're going to put on their whipped cream and we're going to tuck some cherries in and around. And I'm going to use Lawn Fawn's glue tube for this. Sorry guys, I just needed to adjust that heart. It was driving me nutty. So now we're going to, I'm using some liquid glue on this because I really want to make sure that they adhere to one another. Um, a tape runner wouldn't work as well. So liquid glue will because I'm having one on top of the other, one I have this little bit of foam on top of the other, so I really need it to stick to one another. We've got all these cute little cherries, and we're gonna tuck those in. I'm using my tweezers to tuck those in, because that would be delicious on a waffle. The whole time I was making this card, you guys, I was just going, I just for real need to eat some waffles. <laughs> I need to make some waffles. We have a waffle machine, um, but it's in the shape of a Mickey Mouse head because we are complete Disney freaks over at our house. So I think I need to make some because I still haven't made any yet. So again, tucking these little cherries in, I love that this gives this 3D effect. There's something about it that just is super fantastic to me. And I love how it turned out. And then I'm gonna tuck a cherry in between the two waffles. And I like the red on this card um, because it gives it a pop of color because I'm gonna have this against some navy cardstock. And this is Simon Says Stamp soft navy cardstock that we're gonna be using. So finish tucking that last piece in if I can quit throwing it. And aren't they cute? We're gonna stamp on a little, um, some little faces on these guys. Oh, I already did. I must not have recorded that, I apologize. But in, you know, Lawn Fawn always has cute little faces for their images, so I stamped on a girl face and a guy face. I'm using my black glaze pen to um, brighten up the inking on that. And aren't they cute? Look at the, the 3D-ness of that, if that's a word. Now I'm gonna stamp some red hearts because I really did like the red and I am using Lawn Fawn's Lobster Red Ink. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment on the above the reveal wheel window and I'm gonna be stamping that again in Lawn Fawn's Deep Sea Ink. And it's gonna say, you're my. And so I just had to mask off so I could get, mask off some of the sentiment so I could get that phrase that I wanted. 
So I stamped the word your, even though it's not the right spelling of it, I'm giving it to my husband, so I'm not worried about it. And then the word my, and then I'm going to stamp some more red hearts around that because again, I like that pop of color and it, against the blue, it will be so super pretty. So even though I think these are hearts, they're it's totally a dude's card. So now I'm going to stamp another sentiment that says, I'm lucky to have you on the soft navy cardstock using Simon Says Stamp Clear embossing ink. And I'm going to be using some white embossing powder. And I'm going to heat this up with my heat tool. And then we're going to have this great sentiment strip. I felt like it needed um, something below the waffles to kind of ground it. I have a hard time having my images float out there. I see a lot of other people making their cards and it looks so good. And then when I do it, I feel like, what just happened? <laughs> I feel like it looks like a disaster. So to me, having this sentiment underneath it gives it some grounding. So I will trim off the excess. And then we will adhere this to a soft navy A2 sized card panel. And I'm just going to use some tape runner for that. You could use some score tape or, or liquid glue. Anything would work on this. Make sure that's nice and centered and adhere that down. And then I will adhere that to an A2 size card base. But you could just adhere it to an A2 size card base as well. But I wanted that blue frame around it. So now I'm going to adhere it to that. I'm a person that really has to line everything up and look at everything before I just do it. I can't just go for it. That freaks me out a little. <laughs> so stick that down, trim off any excess. And how cute is that card? So much fun. So now I'm going to take some glossy accents and we are going to add um, some glossy accents to the cherries and to the hearts because I wanted those to have some gloss and shine. It makes them look so super yummy. And then that little arrow that we had die cut out of the white paper, I will adhere that down. Um, so that way your recipient knows to spin that wheel. I got a little bit of the glossy accents. The tool in one is perfect. Any sharp tool just removes it and it's fabulous. Look how cute that is. <gasps> so in love with those waffles. Thanks Mona for a great idea on these cute waffles. I am so in love with them. Here's the little arrow because I'm like, oh yeah, we need this little arrow. Perfect. Cleaning up any edges of glue. And that is done. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope that you enjoyed this card. I hope that it inspired you. Um, I had so much fun making it. If you like what you've seen, please like, subscribe, thumbs up, share with your crafty friends. I really appreciate it. Um, I'll be back here real soon with another card. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.